Hey, welcome back to Cellarat TV with your host of Cellarat, Addison Rex. So I'm standing right now in front of the Kenwood Marsh. Deerfield isn't just home to vines, we also have several acres of pristine wetlands. At one point, Sonoma Valley was covered by these kinds of marshes and today it's all been made way for agriculture and this is one of the last places in the Valley of the Moon that this kind of marshland exists. This marsh is also special because there's a species of flower that's very rare. In fact, it only grows in one other known place in the entire world. It's called the Kenwood Marsh Checker Bloom, and Deerfield Ranch Winery set up a charitable organization to try and make sure that this endangered species is able to survive. So for the past two years, uh, we've been propagating seedlings at Cal Berkeley at their uh, botanical gardens and the seedlings have matured enough that they're ready to be planted in their native habitat. So I got together with one of the conservationists uh, from Fish and Wildlife, and we were actually able to plant a few of the seedlings. So check it out. Hey, I'm Kate Simons with the Fish and Wildlife Service. I'm a biologist, and I work in the Partners for Fish and Wildlife program. And our program provides cost share, technical assistance to private landowners for voluntary habitat restoration. So we've been able to work with Deerfield Ranch Winery on restoration activities in the marsh and to help increase the population of the endangered Kenwood Marsh pecker bloom. Which is this little guy right here. Which we just planted here. Well, thanks for all your help today. We really Thank appreciate you. you coming out. Thank you. It's so. a I'd like to say pleasure is all mine, but um, I'm glad you came out too. All right. <laughs> so what's what's the goal? Like, I mean, what would you like to see happen with this plant? I would love to see not only these plants live as long their lives as they can, but to reproduce abundantly, mm -hmm. and and that they'll create seedlings that can survive to become their own flowering plants that set seed that keep the cycle going. Well, I'm really curious, like, how many species are endangered like this? Uh, in, in you California. mean you mean this rare? This rare, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, are, only that are only known to exist in two places in the world, you know. Right, right. Well, Sonoma County has an amazing number. I have not counted them up, but I will bet there's at least 20 plant species known from five or fewer locations. And I know some that, like this one, Kenwood Marsh Checker Bloom, just known from two locations. We have the White Sedge near Sebastopol, known from one location. Wow. And the Pitkin Marsh Lily is only known from two locations. Um, so how many the specimens? The Baker's Larkspur is only known from one location. So we've got, you can just rattle them off, and there's a lot that are just yeah. on the edge of extinction. Really. That's so I mean, they've crazy. Only been, they've always been rare. They've never been abundant. They've never, they've maybe only been described from two or three locations ever. So um, they're naturally rare. But with today's changes in land use and climate, we have to be uh, pretty vigilant to if we want to keep these species from going extinct. And that's why efforts here are really important mm -hmm. because um, without the cooperation of landowners like the Rexes, we wouldn't have this opportunity and you know for, uh, to help prevent extinction of this species. So how many specimens are left right now? Um, well, we don't know the status of the species at the other site, mm. Lost Valley. So this is all we know. I had um, it's um, approximately about 100, as a few months ago, about 140 plants. Wow. Most of them are in this exposure here. How how much? How, we're planting out nine today. How many? How many does it take to um, to to can make the species viable still? That's a good question, and tend to go species by species, but um, there are some rules of thumb about about like starting new populations, and you want to start with at least 30, 
but it depends on how variable an environment that species in mm -hmm. is in. If there's some wild fluctuating climatic patterns, you want to have a much larger population that buffer against those types of events that um, could really decimate a population. Is this species hermaphroditic or? Um, no. Oh, oh, does it? It, it does, does it pollinate, pollinate itself? Yeah, it does. Um, um, actually, that's a good question. I think it does pollinate itself, but it, it's pollinated by honeybees. Okay. So. Because the grapevines, the grapevines are able to pollinate themselves. Uh huh. Yeah, they're self-pollinating. So, um, why was it why was it necessary to uh, mow this area here? I mean, mm -hmm. do they benefit from no, being it's around a good other question. plants? Um, what I found is that. Um, this sedge that what just got mowed, mm -hmm. if it grows unmowed, ungrazed for several years, it builds up a thatch mm -hmm. of dead plant material. Right. And this plant needs bare ground to germinate. Mm. So if it's too thick, it'll it's not gonna... prevent germination. So this is a way to just sort of start with maybe not exactly a clean slate, but. Um, get this above ground biomass cut down. I, I will guarantee you in September it will be back mm. here. Oh yeah. So this is a little bit of a head start, mm -hmm. but we're, we're still going to have that that issue of coming back every year and um, trying to clip down for a little while longer. So if you guys missed it, this is like a, this product is really incredible. It's like a gelatinous mixture of cellulose and water that slowly the cellulose breaks down and releases the water into the soil over time so you don't have to install an irrigation system. And even the cardboard that it comes in eventually is you know, just completely biodegrades. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's called dry water. Dry water. Made in Santa Rosa. Local product. It's donated by the dry water company. <laughs> so. Get your camera going. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's, uh, there's one. Super. For, this site has some natural topography. There's some slightly higher spots. Mm -hmm. And then there's some lower swale spots. And um, I know that moisture will remain longer in the low spots than the higher spots. And you know, every year is different. We the precipitation amount is different every year. So I want to take advantage of different little soil microclimates, so to speak. Mm -hmm by planting them in a variety of locations. And that's, and that's really because we don't necessarily know how this plant's going to react? Right, 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 right. So, because nobody has, this is the first time anybody has ever outplanted <laughs> yeah. a species. So, wow. we learn as we go. We try to make the best decisions we can. Mm -hmm. We try to look at where they occur now and, and try to you know, find sites that mimic those conditions as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then, yeah, we... we, we we learn as we go, so we want to, monitoring is really important. Mm -hmm. to follow up to see how the plants are doing. So do you come back out here several times a year? Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did you uh, choose this site to plant on? Um, it's, um, I wanted to match that site. Uh huh. And so this is really the best site here. You look for a place that has a similar elevation and. Likely um, hydrology uh -huh. as the, the native habitat. So on the other side, what we looked at earlier is where it was originally found. Yeah. And this is the first planting of of plants that we raised. Second. The second planting. Uh, second. Last last year. Uh huh. April. Yeah, last year, and uh, it was not quite as similar as the original habitat. Uh, it was a little wetter over where we planted and a little more shaded. Hmm. Uh, we're seeing uh, more likely invasion of the blackberries. The blackberries over there are <coughs> quite thick. Mm -hmm. We're here because we have sedges. It's going to be a little more uh, similar to the native ha habitat. Hmm. There is a native uh, group of plants over where we had planted, uh, close to it, that uh, is still surviving very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the this planting will give us uh, more of a variety of uh, likelihood that we'll have planted 
uh, grown plants in areas that match the habitat of the original 